This is Swept. And Jerry Cagazzetti. And you're watching They Might Be Giants on Swept Away TV. So watch TV. There's a Everybody, what's up? I'm Zach, and I'm here with uh, the guys from They Might Be Giants. How are you guys doing today? We're pretty good. We're pretty good. This is ICB root beer, everybody. No mistake. Clean living. It's living in LA, but they never get to play. They're just working jobs all day. But their plan is to follow us around. As we go from town to town, the copy in our sand. Now you guys don't look like giants to me. How did you come up with uh, that name for the band? Well, you know, we, we the name, uh, 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 you know, you, it's like the first thing you do when you're a band is you make up a name. Um, it was it was like 20 something years ago. It's like usually a mistake. 25 years ago, I think, and then uh, uh, the mists of time have shrouded whatever reason we had for. I, I guess the thing was at the time, like there were a lot of bands. Um, trying to come up with interesting sounding names, but they all fit in this particular pattern of early 80s rock band names. So we were trying to do something that wasn't that. We came up with Damn Like the Giants, and I mean, in some ways it's like successfully doesn't sound like a name from that particular era, you know? So I guess we did, we did like dodge that bullet. But I, on the other hand, I don't know what, the name doesn't, evoke anything else in particular. I think it's a kind of a question mark of a name, actually. Now you guys are playing, making, not playing, but making a song and playing it for each stop of the tour that you guys are on now. Oh, no, 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 we, we did, did that. We did that. You did that already? Yeah, yeah. 2004, we, Here, on, the this mic the, on the summer tour of 2004, we, we, um, we played about 30 some odd gigs and we uh, made up a song for every gig on the day of the gig at the gig uh, and performed it at the gig and recorded it at the gig. Um, so we came up, we had ultimately a record, you know, CDs worth of very short, you know, easy to perform, songs uh, that were about each each gig that we were playing at. And, and um, you know, it was kind of a, at the time it was kind of like an experiment, but it, it, out of those 34 songs, I think we had a bunch that we considered good enough to sort of, you know, make a little video out of and put together into this DVD. The DVD has videos for, I think, eight of the songs. Eleven. Oh, eleven, excuse me. Eleven of the songs. Uh, eleven, eight, whatever. Um, and then there's like all 30 something songs on a CD, uh, which are the original live versions that you can, you can listen to as well. Bands who were studying our grooves and stealing all our truths and copping all our moves. I know your plan is to follow us around as we go from town to town. You're copying our sound. And I Not only do you guys do songs for my generation, the older college crowd and uh, the younger, high, older high school kids and all that, but you also have songs for, for young children. What yes. uh, got you guys into writing those? Uh, it w wasn't really our idea, right? It was, I think it was like somebody at Rounder Records said, why, yeah. don't you do, why don't you do a children's record? And we were like, okay, sure. You know, why not? And, and it, we weren't really, we were doing about three other things at the time. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, we after like 20 years, you sort of figure nobody's gonna think you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna change careers. Although the strange irony of the whole thing is that it's actually turned into a career that you know quickly rivaled our regular career in in its scope. So uh, we sell a lot of children's records, and we're actually pretty big in the children's market. Um, probably bigger in the children's market than we are in the adult market, actually. So uh, yeah, that was something kind of we weren't expecting. A weird second career, right? It was, it was a big surprise. I mean, we actually had more fun than we thought we were going to have making the record, and then it was surprisingly successful, and it kind of suddenly seemed like a, a way for us to, you know, open it just opened this other door that we didn't even know existed. All you bands who are studying our grooves and stealing all our truths and copping all our moves. 
Now you guys also did songs for TV shows and mm -hmm. uh, different things like that. What got you started in doing that? Well, the first thing we did, I guess we did we did a song for Austin Powers for the second Austin Powers movie, and that kind of got some notice, like kind of inside the Hollywood world of uh, you know people who notice things like that. It kind of put us in the loop of of people who uh, you know do big TV shows and, and network things and. And uh, so we got the offer to do the Malcolm in the Middle theme, and things kind of just kind of kept on snowballing from there. We did the music for The Daily Show, and uh, we've done a lot of odd series that have not lasted that long. I mean, the strange thing about doing like a theme is, you know, that's going to be a big hit, or it's just going to play for a couple of weeks, and it's kind of the same job either way. But it's but you kind of put your song in the the bottle and throw it out into the sea and. See what happens. To follow us around as we go from town to town. You're copying our sound. You're copying our sound. You're copying our sound. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for talking to us. Well, nice talking you. to you.